Welcome back to the vlog. We're going to be at Capital Casino for this week, and we have a lot of highlights and lowlights to go over. This first hand, there is an open from my right. He's been very, very active. I decided to three bet with a six suited. It's been an hour and 15 minutes, and I haven't had much to do, so it seemed like a good idea at the time. Was surprised to get two callers, one from the big blind and, of course, from the opener. So we're going to end up going three ways uh, to this flop. As you can see, the opener called out a turn. Seems like he's uh, pretty excited to play his hand. We see a flop that comes out 7-3-3 three, three with two clubs. Can't get much better than that when you uh, play a raggedy A6. First player checks. Player to my right bets $100. Seems like he has some sort of overpair. Maybe I can uh, represent a bigger overpair here. And if I get caught, I always have the chance to catch an ace or a club. So I jam all in. He takes for a very long time before deciding on a call. I was really preferring that he folded, but uh, he does make the call. And we're going to go see a run out, which comes the beautiful five of clubs right on the turn. So we make the nut flush. I show my hand. He mucks his, saying that he made a good call and that he had an overpair. So we got a little lucky on this one, and uh, we're up a couple hundred dollars to start. Again, the player to my right opens for a raise to $20. Here I have ace-queen offsuit, normally just a regular old three-bet. Uh, but I decided to do something a little different. Uh, I figured that the player on the button, who is a very good aggressive player, sees this guy opening a lot, sees me flatting, and he is very tempted to squeeze in these kind of situations. So I was going to let him squeeze and then come over the top and re-raise. So I flatted for the other $20. Not your standard play. And of course, the player on the button does end up squeezing to $150. Uh, the player to my right folds out, now it's back to me, and now I'm starting to second guess my choice of trying to lay a trap because I thought he would raise to somewhere between 100 and 125, and when he goes 150, it makes me just feel like maybe he has something a little bit extra. Uh, well, I'm going to just go ahead and stick with my original plan. Uh, he could be doing this a lot wider than most uh, three bets. So I decided I was going to raise. I make it $450. Basically committing myself to this pot because I only have about another 300 and change behind. Anyway, he sticks it in. I puke because I know I'm dead beat. Every time I have ace queen, I get jammed on. The guy has kings. But I still got a little over 30% equity. Cost me $300. I'm plus EV to call off with this. Of course, I don't like my hand, but I can't go anywhere. I call off. He says he has kings. I said, you're ahead. I need an ace. Flop comes ace high with all clubs. I say, you got a club? He says, yeah. I don't deserve to win this pot, so I'm expecting to get beat, probably by a red queen on the river, but instead they put out a five of clubs. So we do get beat. We run into the flush. We played this hand horribly, trying to mix it up with a strong player is not always the best idea, especially out of position. I feel like a total idiot right now because I just basically punted off my entire stack with a hand that I probably should have lost 50, 60 bucks with. Don't be an idiot. You don't battle with a strong player out of position. You battle with weak players in position. That's the whole idea of this game. Here I have a very tight player opening for a large raise to $25. Um, normally ace-king, I feel pretty good about just go ahead and getting the money in, especially only having $350 in my stack. But as I said, he is a very tight player. I called, and so did three other players. Flop comes out ace-8-5, rainbow. It gets checked to the initial raiser, who swings out for a bet of $60. Uh, I'm thinking he has ace king ace queen. If he has pocket aces, he's just going to get all my money. I don't want to give anyone a cheap draw of the other three players, so I go ahead and jam. I figure this looks really strong. I might even be able to get him to fold a hand like ace king, which is a chop at this point. After a long tank, he finally decides on a fold. I'm pretty sure he had ace king, but I guess we'll never know. Here I have a seven of diamonds. There's one limper. I raised a 15 and get um, 
Yes, six callers. So we're going to go like uh, very multi-way to a flop with $91 in it, which comes out 764 with the 64 diamonds. So top pair, top kicker, nut flush draw. Everything looks pretty good. It's checked to me. I'm going to continue here. But $30, I don't mind calls. I think I'm uh, probably way ahead. And I think that uh, I kind of want some action. Well, it's folded around to the uh, player in the big blind who decides to give me some action with a $100 bet. Well, $70 raise, I am not going to be folding. Uh, the question is, will I jam? Well, I have enough equity. If he's bluffing, say with like a hand that he think is good, like a top pair with a, a kicker. Well, I want to continue to bluff. If he's ahead, well, I got plenty to catch up with. Turn card comes as a deuce of clubs, not the greatest card in the world, of course, and he goes ahead and jams all in. I'm just going to call off here. I could be ahead, and I got lots of outs if I'm behind. River cards, the three of spades. He doesn't seem like he wants to show his hand, but finally turns over pocket jacks. Well, there goes that hand. All right, we pick up ace jack suited. There's a couple limpers. We raise to 15 and get four colors. So we go five ways to this flop with 75 in. Flop comes out jack nine three with two hearts and a diamond. So we got top pair, back door, flush draw. The small blind decides that they're going to bet out this time for $40. She's been uh, very active, betting a lot of different types of hands. Player at the other side of the table who's more conservative puts in the call. And here I can either raise or just flat. This time I decided to flat and let her continue on all blanks on the turn. So I put in for the $40 and uh, we get to see a turn card of a three of clubs. Really good turn card. Doesn't complete any of the flushes or straights, of course. She leads again this time for $65. Player at the end of the table puts in a quick call. I'm pretty sure they're on some sort of draw, maybe a queen 10 or a flush draw. It's time to get the money in. I feel, feel I'm best at all the time here. So I go ahead and jam. Got a little over $300 left. Small blind tanks for quite a while before deciding on putting in the call. And after she puts in the call, the player at the other end table kind of folds, saying that he had a big draw and he can't afford to call it. She says that she has two pair and she shows over jack nine. So she flopped top two and uh, we're kind of running into it today. The player opens for a raise to $20. He is playing a very tight uh, range for his openings. And I have a little bit of uh, tell on him and he is extremely strong on this hand. And I got two queens. I can't fold, but I definitely don't want to repop them. We're both fairly deep, and uh, I'm afraid to get, uh, you know, four bet very large. After I call, it kind of invites the other uh, two blind players to come in. Also, not too worried about them. Hopefully, we can get a good flop. No aces, no kings, and we'll see what will happen after that. Flop comes out 8-6-3 with two clubs. It gets checked to the initial better. And he comes out for a bet of $45. I'm going to put in a raise here. Uh, not really big. Just enough to find out exactly where I'm at and get rid of the other players. So I make it 125 And he just kind of calls real quick. And with the kind of like the attitude of, doesn't he know I have aces here? Or doesn't he know I have an overpair here? So I feel he has, definitely has an overpair. Could be aces, could be kings. I might be way behind. Also could be jacks or tens. I'd, obviously, I don't think he has queens. And I don't think he'll do it with nines or less. So my read is that he has an overpair. And I'm going to play the hand accordingly. I figure if a blank comes on the turn, I'm just going to go ahead and bet one more time. And then check at the showdown. But of course, the way things are going, all great plans have a little wrinkle. Turn card comes as a ten of spades. Well, I thought he had an overpair, aces, kings, jacks, or tens. And now that a 10 comes, well, that's three out of the four hands I lose to. And uh, one I beat. So I think the best way to play this is just to check this back and uh, call down any kind of blank on the end. 
so I check it. Dealer puts up the jack of hearts. Yeah, this is definitely not my day. Now all four of the hands that I thought he might be playing this way have me beat and lead, leads out for $230. Now granted, I have an overpair. I've been getting beat up today. I've been getting beat up all week, in fact. Nobody would blame me for calling off here and uh, that's what I'm tempted to do. But you know what? I'm just going to sit back for a minute, see if I can get a read on my opponent. And the read I get is that he is very, very comfortable. Um, he doesn't seem nervous at all. It feels like, I mean, even if you had aces or kings here, there would be some level of dif discomfort. But I feel that he had pocket jacks and just hit a jack on the river because he seems very relaxed and not a concern in the world. If it's a bluff, it's a hell of a good bluff. Uh, I have no idea what he would be bluffing with because everything I think he has, he got there. So I'm just going to have to let it go. It's painful. It's frustrating. But uh, in the muck it goes. All right. Things haven't been going my way, but here's my redemption hand. I got a pair of aces. There's a player who limps in under the gun. I raise to 20. I get call from the player on my left. Everyone else folds out until it comes back to the player on my right, and he puts in the call for the $20. So the three of us are going to head off to this flop with $64 in the pot. Flop comes out 9-3-3. Pretty good flop for aces. Don't expect any of my opponents to have a three here. When the first player checks, I decide to bet for $25. Looking to get a little action from someone with maybe a flush draw, a nine, Maybe even just two over cards, some sort of pocket pair that they're willing to see another card with. I get call from the player on my left. That's okay. He's been uh, fairly wide in his calling range. Not too concerned with him. And then, of course, the player on my right also puts in the call. So we're going to see a turn card, which comes the Queen of Hearts. Looks like a great card to me. If they're calling with like two overs or maybe a, some sort of Queen High Flush draw, Definitely going to be able to get some value out of them. There's about 140 in the pot. I decided to bet $110. Player to my left doesn't think very long. He decides to get rid of his hand. Once he folds, it comes around to the player to my right, who decides he's going all in uh, for $230. So it's 120 for, more for me to call. I'm thinking, what would he do this with? I mean, does he really have a three? I mean, I can't put him on too many other hands. Maybe a queen high flush draw and he thinks it's good. Maybe like king queen of clubs or something. Anyway, I the way the day is going, I feel like I'm probably going to be beat, but I don't see how it's going to happen. So I stick it in and uh, we're going to see a run out. River card comes, it is a six of hearts, looks like a complete blank. He says, you got a queen? You got a queen? Yeah, queens are good. And then he rolls over pocket nines. I just tell him I can't beat that hand and I muck my hand. And then afterwards, I turned off the tape, of course, but he asked, oh, can I see his hand? Can, I want to know what he had. And I'm going, isn't it bad enough that you try to slow roll me? Now you have to ask to see my hand. And even after this, he slow rolled like two other players while I was at the table. Got to get a little bit more class. I ended up leaving that day and came back the following day. Decided to play a, a little bit more aggressive and deeper. So I bought in for a thousand. We've been playing for about an hour. This is the first real interesting hand. I have a ace king suited and I'm in the cutoff. Player open for a raise to 15. I go ahead and three bet, he calls. So the two of us see a flop that comes out ace, queen, 10 with two diamonds and a spade. Pretty good flop for my hand. He checks to me. I'm gonna continue here, for $30. He doesn't think very long before putting in the call. And we see a turn card of a three of clubs. I figured if he had something better than what I do, he would have checked raise. So when the three of clubs comes, I feel pretty secure. I decided to go for $85 bet. That'll leave him with about 150 behind and that'll make a call almost mandatory if he has an ace. 
He thinks for a little bit and gets a quick count. And then he puts in the call for the 85. So just looking for a blank on the river. River card comes is a four of spades. Looks pretty good to me. My opponent now decides that uh, that looked good to him too. And he jams all in. I'm going, really? That made you? The four? What do you have? Like ace four hearts? Ace four clubs? Probably most likely he has some sort of missed draw that he's just decided to get desperate with. Or maybe he slow plays something really big like King Jack. I don't know. But again, I don't think I can fold. Not for that price. So I put in the 155. He rolls over ace four clubs. Ah, another one bites the dust. I had another thousand to my stack, making sure I cover everyone. Here we get a bunch of limpers. I raise from the button with nine, 10 suited. Player in the small blind calls, player in the, one of the limpers calls, and then it comes back to the limper on my right who jams all in for about $250. So I want you guys to pause the video for a second and tell me what you think this person has. What type of hand do you think he has? All right, go ahead. I'm not gonna go on until you go down in the comments and put your comment in. I really want to know what you guys think. I don't, I'll wait for you. All right. Thanks for making your comments. Uh, now I'm going to tell you what my experience has been with this type of play. Usually people who limp in after other limpers are set mining with small pairs. Like sixes, fives, fours, those type of hands. If they had like big unsuited cards or some sort of drawing hand, like the type of hand that I have, they would normally just call a raise for $20 and try to hit the flop. But this is like, it's a, like when they're all or nothing type of bets. So they have like a small pocket pair and they're hoping to flip with someone that has like ace king or ace queen and maybe get them to fold out their hands, which normally works very well unless you get some sort of idiot sitting on the button with 9-10 suited. I figured that we are exactly flipping. It's like a 50-50 flip with 9-10 suited against a small pocket pair. In fact, 9-10 suited against a small pocket pair is better than having ace-king. I know some of you don't believe that, but that's the truth. So I make the call. The small blind ends up folding a hand he said was pocket tens. The other player folds out. So it's just going to be the two of us to see this flop. And I'm hoping that my read was correct because otherwise I'm going to look like a fool. Flop comes out 875 rainbow. It's good and it's bad. I got an open end straight draw, but a lot of those sets get there. Turn card comes is a three of clubs. And we see a six of diamonds on the river. We make the nuts. He shows over pocket eights. I'm trying to pick up my cards right now, but it's hard to hold the camera and turn your cards over at the same time. Well, we ended up winning the flip and uh, we scooped this big pot. I know it's a little unorthodox to call off with 10 high for $250, but sometimes you just got to go with your read. There are two limpers in front of me. I look down at pocket nines in the cutoff. Good enough to put in a raise. I make it $20. Button folds out, small blind and big blind both put in the call. It's back to the original limper who now raises to $95. Now, this limp raise is a lot different from the last limp raise. The last limp raise came in after several limpers and he was in like good position. When you're the first person in and you limp and do the limp re-raise, it's usually a very strong hand. Aces, kings, and he just saw me call down with 10, nine suited. So I'm thinking that he is going to be salivating right now, trying to get my money in. I think he has aces. And as you know, from earlier in this vlog, aces doesn't always do well against pocket nines. So I'm going to call for $75 more. He has a pretty deep stack probably about another $750 remaining after this call. And I want it all. Flop comes out, beautiful nine, six, three rainbow. He checks over to me 
I figured he's like laying the trap, hoping that I'll just fire with everything that I have, thinking that maybe he had an ace king type of hand, but I'm sure he has aces. I bet $80, let's build the pot. He peeks back at his hand and decides to put in basically a min raise. He makes it $180. Music to my ears. This is aces. He's playing it just like aces. Okay, let's just put in the call. You'll have about a pot size bet left for the turn card, which comes a three. The three is the perfect card for us. Expect him to be jamming. He flips in the chip. I snap call. He turns over his pocket aces. The focus is off. Please forgive me. We get a clean run out and we end up scooping this big pot for $1,700 by snapping off pocket aces. This hand happened to be the last interesting hand of the week. It was a pretty rough week for me. I got blitzed on uh, Monday. Uh, it seemed like everything I did was wrong. I flopped two pairs. Someone would flop a straight. I've, I think I have four bet pocket queens twice against ace king. And one time a flop came ace high and the other time it came king high. So uh, it was a pretty ugly week all in all. But I finished it on a high note. And uh, I wasn't really pleased with the way I played a lot of the hands. Um, I think I was a little bit uh, too aggressive in some spots and too passive in others. So hopefully get us all squared away before I head out to Texas where I'm playing against uh, good players with big stacks. So until next time, good luck at the tables and we'll see you back here soon.